The Mixface is a powerful MIDI controller, especially when paired with the SL88 or the Studio Logic SL73. But how does it stand up as a DAW controller? We're going to look at four different DAWs. Use the description section of this video to skip to your DAW so that you can bypass most of this video. The mode of the eight buttons on the mix face depend on which of the modes you select on the mix face, the record, the mute, the solo, or the select. Transport, play, pause, and record are going to be looked at, as well as loop and marker set, as well as jump to marker controls. Let's first take a look at Pro Tools 12. And let's get the control surface set up by going to Setup and Peripherals. And then we're going to look at the HUI is what we're going to select as the control surface under MIDI controllers. Now remember to set the uh, receive and the send ports to the mix face port 3. You cannot only select receive or send independently. You must have them both set up and be sure to click OK so that you save your settings. And the maximum number of channels you can assign is 8. We are going to see how the bank buttons can select the upper 8 and lower 8 channels on the mixer. Here you see the lower 8. If you switch banks to 9 through 16, it will pick the upper 8 channels. That way the faders on the mix face will be controlling the respective faders that are assigned. You can see the blue outline to indicate which channels are controlled by the mix face. And as you can recall that on the mix face, the respective eight buttons that are at the bottom of the faders depends on what you're going to be using on the right. So we're going to start with record. Once you hit the record button, it will assign all of the buttons that are below each fader as arming the track for record. Switching to controllers 9 through 16, you'll notice that when you press the button under the first fader, it will arm track 9. And if you go to the second fader, it'll arm track 10. Turn your attention to the mute buttons, and you'll notice that when you select the mute modality, that the mix face will now mute channels 1, mute channel 2, and if you change to the upper controllers 9 through 16, it will mute channels 9 and 10. Turn your eyes to the bottom of the mixer, and we're just jumping over to the select modality, and that's where you'll see that using the buttons at the bottom of the mix face in select mode, it will select channels 9, 10, and if you switch to the lower 8, then you'll be selecting 1, 2, depending on which mode you're in. I bypassed the solo button because I think you can figure out how that works. Unfortunately, Pro Tools doesn't have a dedicated master fader, so the master fader is not going to work on the mix face. Master fader on the mix face is indicated as the ninth fader with the M1 and M2 underneath it. Looking at the transport function with the mix face in Pro Tools 12, there are a few problems. When you first set it up, um, you might run into some issues where you hit record and it just changes the record modality or you might hit play and it changes and cycles through the play modalities. And this can be overcome by simply restarting Pro Tools. You'll see here that if I try to click on or try to assign uh, the record function, rather than starting record, it's actually toggling through the different record modes in Pro Tools. And so again, this would just require you to restart Pro Tools and then the functionality of the transport should be restored. That's why I would recommend messing with the transport before you start any project to make sure that it is actually working. Once you restart Pro Tools, everything should work very well. So we're going to go ahead and restart Pro Tools, and then we'll be able to use the transport. Once Pro Tools is restarted, we're also going to be having a look at the marker assign and uh, jump to marker functionality to be able to navigate in each track. So we're just going to arm track one and then we're going to use a transport to go ahead and hit record but then it won't start recording until you hit play. And then we're just going to do some recording and you're going to notice that I'm going to be using the marker assign button that's on the mix face and I'm just pressing it here to assign a few markers 
I'm probably going to assign three or four. Marker assign is just above the play stop button on the transport on the mix face. So we're going to assign a few markers here. Now one of the problems with Pro Tools, and we're going to see on the jump to markers, that it will jump to markers one and markers two, but it won't jump to other markers beyond marker one and marker two. So we're going to go ahead and try this where we're, uh, I'm going to set this to beats real quick. And then we're going to be using the jump to marker to jump to marker one, marker two. Now I'm going to try to jump to marker three, but it won't. And so that's one of the problems with the mix face. It only uses marker one and marker two, and this is only in Pro Tools. Marker select is under the edit button on the mix face. Since we're trapped between the two markers, you may want to delete a marker if you're stuck with two markers. And the way to delete a marker is simply grab it, drag it down, and you'll see the trash can. It will delete the marker. Now this might be something about my setup. I'm not absolutely sure, so um, you may want to work with that. Now with the loop function um, on the mix face, you'll see the loop button and this will enable and disable the loop. I'm gonna shorten this loop here real quick so that we can get this done. Now this is loop enable. If I press the loop button, I can toggle the loop function on and off. So if I press the loop button, it will turn it off. Until then, the track will continue to loop until you use the loop toggle button. Now I haven't figured out how to retain the loop region. Uh, again, that will be something that uh, you'll have to set up in Pro Tools. I'm not super proficient in Pro Tools. And I don't use the loop function unless I'm comping a recording on a particular track. I do use the loop tool a lot for Ableton, but we'll go over that later. Now let's look at Studio One version 4 Professional. To be able to use the mix face as a control surface, it's important to go up to the Studio One and then you're going to go down to Options. And you're going to be, I have one set up here already. We can have a look at how it was set up. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And we're going to go ahead and set up one from scratch. So I'm just going to go add. And then I'm going to go down to Mackie and pick control. And be sure to, to pick uh, port 3 on the mix face for the send and receive. And once you do this, it's actually going to pretty smoothly set up the mix face to control studio one mix face works uh probably best with studio one and absolutely perfectly with cubase so you'll see using the faders i can change the volume of each track i can use the buttons respectively to enable and disable uh, or arm and disarm record i can use it to mute depending on what um depending on which of the four modalities you pick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and record. And you'll notice that these flags are turning up and that's because I'm using the marker button on the mix face just above the transport to identify each of these markers. And they turn up automatically and they're numbered. And I can go ahead and use just above the fast forward, uh, the marker select to jump to each of the markers. I can select them by hitting the next marker or the previous marker. And you can see that it smoothly jumps to each marker. Again, Studio One is really well suited for the mix face. And if you're going to use the loop enable and disable, it's actually very handy. It works again very seamlessly, very easily with um, the mix face and Studio One and you just create a region and all you have to do is hit the loop button on the mix face and it will enable and disable loop. So you have full functionality. You can select the loop, uh, the transport, the record, jumping to each of the markers, assigning markers on the fly, and this is all on the control surface. Now, what's nice about Studio One version 4 and even previous versions is you can see where the pan pots um, are very easy to run uh, on each track. You can assign mute 
depending on what mode you're in. Solo and the track select is what you use on the, the far right of the four buttons to select a, a given track. Uh, those all work perfectly. And a really nice feature is because Studio One has a dedicated master fader, uh, then the M1, M2 master fader uh, does work the ninth fader on the mix face. Studio One works very well. Since Studio One 4 was developed by the X employees of Cubase or Steinberg, Cubase Pro works very well with the mix face and actually a little bit better. So we're going to be looking at how to set up the mix face as a control surface and it's very simple. You go to studio and then you're going to go down to studio setup. I have it set up here so I'm going to go ahead and remove it by hitting the minus. And if you hit the plus button then that's going to set up a control surface and you're going to want to pick Mackie control. And then make sure that you assign the input, MIDI input and output to mix face 3 as it is there. Once you hit OK, we're all set to go and everything runs pretty smoothly in Cubase. The faders will be running um, the first nine uh, in when you have it in uh, one through or first eight, one through eight. And uh, a cool feature is that whenever you move a fader, Cubase will actually arm the track for record. So that's a very cool feature. I'm not even hitting the arm button, but you see that mute works no problem. Uh, if you're in the mute modality or if you're in the solo modality with the four buttons on the right on the mix face, then all the eight buttons underneath the fader will uh, act accordingly. And if you're in select mode, you'll be selecting each track. So I'm going to do a little bit of recording here and I'm going to show you a little something that you might come across when you're using the uh, marker tool on the mix face or the marker button. And so I'm going to be recording here. I'm hitting the marker button, but you're going to notice there's no indication of any marker being assigned. The marker button is right above the play stop on the mix face, and you don't see any markers. Well, there's a reason for that, and that would be because you don't have the marker track exposed. So you right-click, go to Add Track, head over to Marker Track, and you're going to add the track. I'm going to slip it up to the top here. And you'll notice that the markers that I was pressing, they're now present. Using the marker select buttons under the edit button, I can jump to each of the markers. And this is actually very handy. You can almost use Cubase as a live performance tool, something like Ableton, if you can jump through these different markers, which is pretty handy. So if I'm hitting play and I want to jump to a marker, I can just do that, jump back to a marker, and uh, it's Again, very handy. Now, regarding the loop function, it's the uh, exact same as Studio One, and it's very easy. It works perfectly. There's really no problems that I found with uh, the mix face working with Cubase. So you just use the loop button to enable and disable. And again, the loop button is located above the record button on the mix face. Finally, since Cubase also has a dedicated master fader, the M1, M2 ninth fader on the mix face will work properly as a master fader. So that's very handy. So mix face and Cubase, they all work really well together. So now we're going to look at Ableton. And before I get started in Ableton, I want to make sure to review a little bit about how to set up Bluetooth. And you're going to need a couple of things to get Bluetooth going. One is what I did on a previous video. This is MIDI Berry. Make sure that MIDI Berry is running. And also Loop MIDI is what MIDI Berry uses to give a virtual MIDI port to um, Ableton. This is very important to set up if you're going to be using Bluetooth. So I'm going to be setting up Ableton to use Bluetooth uh, first off. And I will be using the transport and marker functions in Ableton via Bluetooth and then I will go into using the hardware um, buttons uh, through the device port. So let's go ahead and set up the uh, control surface in Ableton. So I'm actually going to be selecting the Bluetooth virtual port that I set up the MIDI and I'm only going to be using the input and I'm going to be enabling all three of these across I don't select output because it will create an error in loop MIDI if you're using Bluetooth. 
Now that I'm controlling via Bluetooth, you'll notice that I can control the pan, the fader level, and uh, all of the respective features in the different modalities being record, or if I'm going to be using mute, um, you know what mute looks like in Ableton, or if I'm in a solo, uh, then I can use the solo modality on each of the tracks. And select is uh, actually a pretty cool feature. I'm going to be going over that in just a minute. But again, uh, Ableton has a dedicated master fader, so that's very cool. Um, so the M1, M2, ninth uh, fader on the mix face will work as a master fader. This doesn't happen in Pro Tools only because it doesn't have a dedicated master fader. From the four buttons on the right of the mix face, the each channel is now can be used to select. And there's a very cool feature about select. If you double tap the select button on the respective channel um, when you're in select mode, it will actually minimize or maximize the channel. So double tapping that uh, button beneath each fader uh, is a very handy tool when you're in the arranger modality instead of the scene modality of uh, Ableton. So it's very cool. Now suppose you're going to be connecting your mix face via the device port directly into the computer. Then you're going to want to change this to uh, number three, uh, input port number three. And uh, then I would disable the loop MIDI ports that I created. And now I'm going to be looking for mix face port three for the input. And um, it is here. Okay, I found it. Okay, and then what I'm going to have to do is uh, enable each of the three under the hardware input. And I don't uh, select any port on the output. It's very important not to do that. So now we're going to do a little bit with um, recording. And uh, I'd like to just use the transport on the mix face to do exactly what um, with all the other DAWs you do, uh, hitting record. And I'm going to be hitting the marker button to assign markers. Marker assign is above the play stop button on the mix face. And the marker select is just to the left of it. So here I'm using the marker assign and throwing some markers in there. Markers are great in Ableton on the arranger uh, mode to set up a situation where you might have a loop section that you have for kind of a vamp. And then each marker can actually indicate the beginning of a song. So now we've gotten all of our markers set. And I'm just going to uh, zoom in and uh, kind of move the uh, loop region to where I want the loop to be. Let's say four is going to be a vamp section. And then what I can do now is enable and disable loop using the loop button on the mix face. So this is very cool. I would typically leave that um, loop enabled. And now I can just jump to the respective uh, markers, which we can maybe imagine to be a song. And so as I'm playing, uh, I, can, uh, I can assign each one of these markers to the beginning of a song. And uh, then that uh, marker can be launched depending on who's uh, using the mix face live. And uh, then you can select a song or a vamp section if you're going to the loop section. And the loop button is just right under or above the record button. So you can turn the loop on and off. But here we're launching a song and I've selected the first marker. Now I'm going to select uh, to vamp for a minute here. And then I'm going to go back to the second marker, which would be a second song after vamp. And then uh, that would be where I could launch uh, another song. And uh, we would play that song. And then I can go back to a vamp um, and then loop on the vamp for a while. And then maybe I can go into the third song and uh, launch that clip. Uh, so that would be, or the, the whole song arrangement. And uh, that's how the mix face can kind of be used a little bit like a looptimus but not quite as efficient as a loop to miss. But the mix face can be used for a lot of different things. So those are the four DAWs, and it looks like the mix face is pretty stout in uh, being a mix face controller. A little bit of problems with Pro Tools, but that's about it.